What is going on guys? So today I got a bunch of things to do. You guys just saw the build series of videos which is still going on but I got to do a few things. The Cobra, Ashley's car. Right now I'm gonna go head over to Ford to get Ashley's oil changed. We do it there because one, it's about $10 more than buying all the materials myself. Two, it's extremely hot here in Florida. Three, I hate disposing of oil. So we're gonna head over to Ford, get her oil changed. I know that they do it right over there. It's the same dealership Brian works at. So we're gonna go head over, take the Whipple 5.0 to get the oil changed. We're gonna come back. I got a bunch of things to do on the Cobra over there um, to kind of tweak some things. There might be a vacuum leak, um, so we're gonna kind of mess around with it. So we'll go hop in this. Cobra's just chilling over there. Poor Turdzilla. <laughs> All right, we have arrived. Mr. Quad Tip works over in there. We're gonna go head over here and we'll stop by and see Mr. Quad Tip. All right, so we just dropped the car off over there. We're gonna go stop and see I'm Brian over here. Hey, you think that's a Dodge? I don't know, it might be a Chevy. It's a Camaro. I can't tell. It might be a yeah, it might be a Camaro. All right, oil change is done. 50,000 miles on this bad boy. All right, so I semi opened up the garage to bring the car in here. I'm gonna do that very quickly so I don't get it hot. I gotta check for a vacuum leak, um, check for the downstream air temperature because that's not reading on the SET. So I gotta check a few things out, but I'm gonna give that a try here. So let's go ahead and pull the car in. So I haven't been able to find my vacuum leak. I was going to start the car, but I found a small fuel leak on the back side over here. So I'm going to pull the fuel rail first just to kind of get an idea and try to fix that fuel leak. And then we can try to figure out where this vacuum leak is coming from. Alright, so I got the fuel rail off. The leaking portion, I believe, is those two back Allen nuts, which I'm going to get something to seal the threads on there. Um, vacuum leak, I'll have to figure out after that. It's just, it's so hot here in Florida, it's ridiculous. It's well over 90 degrees outside, probably warmer in here. I just have this AC thing going. But, man, it's, it's so hot. Um, I'm losing motivation to get this done because it's just crazy man um, and I got to get stuff to seal that off I still need to get a 3-2 upper pulley so I'm gonna go pick one of those up um, I gotta go pick up some stuff I gotta finish off moving the fuel lines over here to basically get them away from the header and I gotta figure out where this damn vacuum leak is which is driving me crazy I also need another downstream air temperature sensor off the back of there so gotta figure that out on top of that all right, so we're going to take a break here working on the car because um, obviously I need that fuel leak fixed before I can start the car and try to figure out where this vacuum leak is. So we're going to head over, pick up a 3.2 upper pulley for this. We're going to stop by Nick's. I got to bring him his battery um, that I've had for a little while and run a few errands, probably stop by Harbor Freight. Do a bunch of different things. So we'll bring you guys along the way and hopefully it'll cool down a little bit and it'll be a lot better to work on this car a little bit later. All right, we just stopped by over here to grab a Copra pulley, 3.2 for pump gas, and some new throttle body bolts because I lost a few. So, should be good now for pump gas with that pulley. All right, so we just made it over to see Nick. He's working on this thing. This thing's pretty cool. Full cage. Um, this is actually SB tuning. They actually have a YouTube channel. We got the car up in the lanes, and we're looking for nines today, so by the title of the video, you might know if we made it already or not. One six! 
Um, they were in like one of the Boosted Boys videos. But this thing's fully gutted, caged. Uh, I believe the engine makes somewhere around 700 wheel horsepower. And this thing probably weighs something like 2,000 pounds. So Nick's been working on this. Um, Nick and Ricky got the cage all done. It's pretty sick. So if you want to check out their channel, you can click the thing up there. Um, I would like to run this in the Cobra, but I'm probably going to get whooped if he gets any sort of traction. So there's that. But it is a pretty sick setup for sure. All right, adios. Yep. See you later, Andrew. Race car. It's faster than the Cobra. I bet it is if he can get traction, dude. I bet I'll yank the Cobra hard. Papa, look at these doors. <laughs> 2,000 pounds. Lightweight. Probably 1,900. <laughs> Shit. All right, so we just made it back. Uh, we're gonna put those two bolts that I believe were leaking back on the rail. We'll try to prime the system, see if it's still leaking. And then if that's good, I'll also put the two throttle body bolts that I got on over there. So if that's good, then I can start the car and try to look for this vacuum leak. It did start raining, but that's not a terrible thing. And the car was also filthy, so kind of wash some of the shit off of it. Even though raining doesn't really clean it, but it was filthy, so that's fine. And it'll hopefully cool down this area a little bit too. All right, well, I got the car started and I figured out my vacuum leak. I don't know why this wasn't an issue before, but uh, yeah, here's the issue. I just plugged the bottom. This is a PCV T. I don't know why it was teed and I don't know if, if a piece of it fell off or something. I'm gonna put that back in there and I plugged it with my hand while the car was running and the car started idling up. So I'm gonna try this and see if that's all the issue was. All right, so I got the car fully pulled in. I'm gonna get started on this, the adding more boost. Um, that's gonna be for a separate video. However, um, I'm just gonna get it started now. I'm gonna include that in its own video, talking about those various different pieces from Metco Motorsports. Brian is gonna be bringing me over a new alternator. Since I have to pull the alternator out anyways, and this one's reading a little bit low in voltage, we're gonna replace the alternator just to be safe. You got a parts delivery? Alternator. Cobra alternators. <sighs> Hopefully some works. Yeah. What is going on guys? So I've been working on the Cobra. We are gonna be installing a wide band on the Cobra. Now I do already have a glow shift wide band and it works pretty well in the car. But with E85, uh, it is gonna be beneficial to have lower readings than 10.0 as well as a raw lambda reading and an accurate uh, wideband is also very helpful. So I am switching to an AEM. Uh, this is the Uego, some, some type of AEM version um, that does read below 10, which isn't necessary um, as long as you can read out lambda, but the other one I can only read lambda through an SCT device or actually through the computer. So we are gonna be installing this. It's actually fairly simple. I already have a O2 sensor spot um, and I already have a wideband installed. So a lot of it's just kind of swapping out the old unit. I am gonna run the new wire for this one down into the car and then I'll eventually put the wideband on Turdzilla um, that came out of this. All right, so it's kind of hard to film under the car, but we went ahead and ran. I like to basically run this down around the clutch cable. So I did that and I'm also pulling the old one out. Um, so we'll pretty much be ready to go into the car in a sec. I'm just gonna zip tie it around the clutch line. It's a nice safe area for the wire. All right, so I've been having some other issues with the car. This car has been driving me crazy. And I think I skipped a good portion of the wideband install just because I've been filming. But I pretty much have it all wired together. Um, it just needs to be basically tucked out of the way. But here we go. We got the wideband wired in, the sensors on the bottom of the car. I can't start the car right now because I had a tensioner snap, so I had to order another one on Amazon. So, but we have that wired in. I believe my boost gauge should still be lit up. And that it is. So I'm taking the wide band out of this car. I'm gonna put it in Turdzilla. I went with this because it has a analog output. 
that is more desirable to the SCT. It also has some different modes on here to go ahead and read lambda, the raw lambda value out. Um, so this one is kind of a more accurate and since I'm going to be pushing this car harder, I definitely want something that is super quick, super responsive. And that's why I went with the AM. Not that the glow shift wasn't working right, but that's what we ended up doing. All right, well, pretty much everything in this car has gone wrong and I'm very annoyed. The wide band's hooked up. I think it works, but I can't start the car. I'm obviously very frustrated. The gauge pillar thing, which is not the original gauge pillar thing for the car or the, the pillar plastic, but the pin broke off here, so now it won't stay and it just flops and falls like that. So, very annoyed with the car because nothing has gone right. The battery keeps dying. Um, I can't start it to, to drive it because the belt's all messed up, the tensioner is broken on it, so just really annoyed. All right guys, so as you could see in that last clip, I was pretty annoyed with everything that was going on with the car, and the car is still not done. Today is Friday, so I'm recording this now. That clip, last clip was from today as well. Um, I am just so annoyed with the things that are going on with the car. Um, I've had a few different fuel leaks, which I have fixed up. Um, the four pound lower, everything's on down below, but there are some issues. It might just be too long of a belt. That's why I got a new belt. Um, but I've been trying to get this together by myself, which is kind of the problem. So I ended up snapping the tensioner arm, um, or basically where the half inch breaker bar goes into the tensioner to depress it. I snapped it off because my fault. I was going crooked on it because I was also trying to hold the belt up top, put it on the supercharger. So I ended up breaking that. So that broke off and now I'm ordered one. So that'll be here Sunday. I'm also having an issue with the downstream air temperature. For some reason, it does not want to read. I haven't really gotten the car to, um, um, you know, kick on long enough. Um, the other thing that really annoyed me is now the clip is broken on the gauge pillar pod, so I need to get another one of those. And um, there's also a fuel line that's really close to the steering shaft, and I could not get a good solution to keep it away. I think it's away from it, but I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna have to bring the car down to Nick or someone and get the car on the lift so I can get that tucked away so it's never gonna hit there. I've just ran into a lot of different issues with the car and it's really frustrating. Um, you know, it's a good idea to walk away from the car. Sometimes I don't do that and I really need to, um, but sometimes I just really wanna get things done and be done with it, especially with how hot it is. Um, with the AC unit and the door closed, I can get that garage down to about 80 degrees when it's about somewhere around 95 to 100 outside. Um, it's just so difficult to work on the car and do it all by yourself. I ended up having Lee help me with the Metco stuff. Um, that video is gonna come as soon as I figure out exactly what I need to fix, um, you know, get the belt working, because the belt was walking itself off. Luckily, I did find the vacuum leak. Uh, turns out that T actually goes to a PCV line that goes down below. So I ended up taking the uh, cap off and hooking it up properly. So there's no vacuum leads as far as I know. As far as I know, the wide band should work. Um, it looked like it was working, powering on, and it is plugged in. So that new wide band should be much better. Um, I apologize for that last clip. Um, I was considering not putting it in, but I feel like it is a good idea to put it in and show my frustration. Um, but Hopefully it's coming up soon. We're looking at Wednesday and Thursday for dyno tuning. Uh, 93 octane on Wednesday and Thursday is E85. And that implies that everything goes according to plan and I can figure out the issues that I'm having with the car. Um, it's just been driving me absolutely crazy. And the downstream air temperature is still one thing that I really don't know how to fix. Um, the other things you, know, you can fix by tweaking and taking things apart and putting it back together. Um, the downstream air temperature I'm not sure what's wrong with it, which is driving me crazy because that's so important on a long pole or even just a dyno pole that decides if um, timing needs to be pulled. Um, so that definitely needs to be fixed before the car can get tuned.
So anyway guys, if you are still watching, uh, make sure you like this video down below. Leave a comment, let me know what you think of the 700 wheel horsepower build series, which I have been working so hard um, to get this thing done. Um, if you are interested, we have American flag uh, Mustang lifestyle decals down below in the description. We also have t-shirts now in stock. We have the dark gray, the light gray. Um, so the website link is down there in the description. Um, so make sure you go check out out um, t-shirts and the stickers we have more um, key tabs coming in we just sold out so quickly it was insane um, but go pick up a sticker it also really helps support the build and everything we're doing here and if you are still watching don't worry the black car you guys are gonna find all about that very very soon and I'm so excited to reveal that to you guys so anyway guys we'll catch you later and we'll see you